Hello everyone and welcome back. In this video we have three objectives. First, we want to install Body Parser in order to parse the body of a post request. We also want to use Body Parser to get the form data from a post request. And finally, we're going to update our post route to actually use that data. So first, let's look at this HTML form, this form right here. Now, in the last video, I already mentioned this, but I'm going to say it again. There is the name attribute on our inputs. These name attributes need to be unique if we have multiple inputs. So let's say we've got title. Let's say we have an author right here. Input type equals text. Name equals author. Placeholder equals author. And we don't want to autofocus that one. So now if we refresh our page, we have book title and author. So we have two different inputs and the way that we're going to access those on the back end is by their name. So you need a name attribute. All right, so first step is we're going to come back to our app.js. Instead of just sending back books post route, we're going to add first a console.log request.body. Now if you'll remember request is this right here and that, that gives us access to all the things on the request. So let's just try this. I'll go ahead and give you a hint. This is not going to work. So the book title might be Dune and the author would be Frank Herbert. Let's submit that and we'll still hit that post route but let's look at the console. Console is undefined. Right now request.body is undefined. The reason for that is because Express doesn't do anything with the body for us. By default Express doesn't have this request.body so we need to add some um, middleware in order to get that. Now the middleware we're going to add is an npm package called body parser. So let's go ahead and install that. Let's stop our server. And npm i body hyphen parser. If you want to look at the docs, npm body parser, just google that. Body parsing middleware, it tells you what it does and there's all kinds of cool stuff that body parser will do for you. You can customize this in a, a very wide variety of ways. Body parser is a very, very robust middleware. I highly recommend you check it out. I'm going to show you one use of it and some of the things that you can do with it, but this is not at all going to be exhaustive. Just like everything else we do here, we're getting kind of our, our feet wet and I'm showing you the basics, but it's going to be up to you to dig deeper whenever you need some more advanced functionality. It's worth noting there are other middlewares that can parse body requests. There are several other ones, but body parser is by far the most popular. So that's the one we're going to use because it's the one you're most likely to run into. And we're going to use this on pretty much every app we make. Anything that's going to use an HTML form to get data from the user, you're going to need some sort of middleware to get that data, and body parser is the one that we're going to use. So inside of our app.js, let's go ahead and import body parser. Const body parser equals require body parser. Now I could have kept the same naming scheme using snake case, which is the um, the hyphen, but I like to use camel case whenever I have JavaScript variables. That's just my personal preference. You can do whatever you want. So we've imported it. Now we need to use it. App.use body parser dot URL encoded. And inside of there, we're going to pass an object that says extended true. This is another one of those things that's just kind of the boilerplate that you need to do this. This is setting options for body parser. Um, it's using it and it's using the URL encoded version and the option is that we're using the extended URL encoded version. If you want to look that up and see what exactly what that does, you're welcome to check out the docs, but I'm not going to really go into it. You're going to use this 99% of the time just like it is, copy paste, boilerplate. It is worth noting that the URL encoded property is important, but again, we don't have really time in this course to get into why that is and all that kind of stuff. So just trust me that you're going to use it exactly like this in the vast majority of cases. So now that we have that, let's go ahead and start our server. And it's running. Let's go back to the books route. We can get rid of that. We don't really need to, but I like to keep it clean. So let's go ahead and do that book again. The title is Dune. The author is Frank Herbert. Submit. Now we still just go in here, but look at our console. Now we have our data. Because we've added body parser and we've imported it and we've used it, we can now access that data on request.body. The request.body will be an object that has key value pairs of the form data that we submitted. What we can do now is we can add things to this books constant. So let's go ahead and try that. 
So the first thing we're going to do is right now in our books, we're just, we just have strings. But we're going to change that. We want this to be objects with two key value pairs, the author and the title. So our first object is going to be author, Jim Butcher, title. Um, I don't remember exactly what book it was. Now that I think about it, I want to say it was Turncoat, but it could have been another one. Let's do that to each of these. So now we have the exact same three, and if we save this and refresh and everything, our books page is now going to be jacked up. Let's go to books. Not going to work because we are not um, parsing the data correctly inside of our view. So let's go ahead and update that as well. Now the views, instead of just putting for each book the book, we want to do a string. And we're going to do a um, template string. So we want author, so book dot um, title, and then we want that hyphen, and then finally we want book dot author. Save and refresh and see if that works. There we go. Turn coat by Jim Butcher, Count of Monte Cristo, Alexandre Dumas, and Immediate Corvallis by S.M. Sterling. So now that we've updated that to use the new format for our data, we can now come down here to our post route and add new things to that data. So let's go ahead and try just doing books.push request.body. I'll go ahead and let you know this isn't going to work. It's close, but it's not quite going to work. Go ahead and be thinking about why this isn't going to work. But let's try it. Refresh, title, Dune, Frank, Herbert, submit. Uh-oh, books is not defined. Why is books not defined? This is an issue of scoping, because right now we have books, but books is created within this callback function, and it only exists within this callback function. In order to access it outside of this callback function, we have to move it and make it a global variable. Now this, again, is not good practice, generally speaking, and it's not going to be this way in our application for long. This is just kind of simulating a database, but for now, let's go ahead and cut that out and make it up here. So now we have this books const that exists in the global scope. Let's try it again. Go back, refresh our page, see that this still works. But now let's try submitting our form, and we hit the books post route, which is exactly what we want. This is, this is what our post route does, but we did not get an error, importantly. And the next thing we need to do is inside of our post route, it says we're already pushing, but we don't know how to verify that yet. But we could verify it by just going back to books. Now we have Dune Frank Herbert. And we could add another one if we wanted to. We'd add The Name of the Wind, literally my favorite book in the world, by Patrick Rothfuss. Submit. And we still hit that post route. So this is obviously not a very good user experience, but our functionality is working because we are able to add to our array of books. And we can continue adding as many as we want. So this is working. The next thing I want to do real quickly is to fix our um, user experience. Instead of just response.sending books post route, we want to go back to this git route. We want to hit this git route. Get rid of the extra stuff there. So we're going to use another thing that Express gives us on a response object. So we're going to do response.redirect. And inside of redirect, you just put the route that you want to redirect them to. Response.redirect back to slash books. And we don't need this console.log anymore, so we can get rid of that. So now we're in books. Let's look at it. Uh-oh, what happened? Our stuff went away. That is because we restarted our server. Whenever we have constants, variables, whatever, inside of this JavaScript, they only exist for as long as our server is running. Whenever our server stops and restarts again, those are destroyed. So we have this const books that's created each time, but anything we put in is destroyed anytime our server restarts. That is the main reason that you have to have a database, because database, because databases provide data persistence. Once we hook up a database to this, we're not going to have this constant right here. Our data is going to be stored inside of a database, which is persistent, meaning that when we stop and start our server, we're still preserving our data. Our data is not going to be deleted or anything. But for now, we're still stuck with this um, constant line here because we haven't looked at databases yet. That's going to be in the next unit. So let's go ahead and look at our books. We have our books right here. Let's go ahead and add Dune back in by Frank Herbert. 
submit. Now we are being redirected back to this books page after our um, book is added to it. So that basically what this is doing is when we hit submit on this form, it is making this post request. It is taking the data we did and pushing it into that books constant, that books array, and then it is redirecting us back to this git route. This is perfect because this allows us to quickly and easily add stuff. If we wanted to add the name of the wind by Patrick Rothfuss, we could. And we were redirected back to books. We could quickly and easily add as many books as we wanted. One thing to note, as I add new books, you'll notice this page does a full page refresh. So let's just add one more. Um, the, wise, the wise man's sphere, or a oh, wise man's sphere. I forget what it is. Um, a wise man's fear, again by Patrick Rothfuss. Now notice this does a full page refresh. That is not the best, um, but it's really the best we can do without incorporating some of the more advanced libraries such as Vue or React or things like that. In this video, we did several things. First, we installed Body Parser, which is an NPM package that allows us to actually access the data from those forms because Express does not give that to us by default. We updated our post route so that it takes the books um, array and then pushes that data onto that array so that our, our array is being updated. In order to do that, we had to move our books constant to a global variable. But again, this will not stay here. We're not even going to have a books constant once we add databases. And we also learned that data is not persistent on our server whenever we store it in this way. Whenever our server stops, so if I stop the server and then start it again, go back to books, all the new books I've added have been lost. The only ones there are the ones that I have hard-coded in right here. This is an issue that will be solved once we incorporate a database, and I promise that's coming soon. As always, if you have any questions, please let me know. I'll be happy to help. Thanks.